Well, my influences. See, I grew up in New York City, so I, I had a good advantage, I have to say, particularly being a stage struck kid. New York is about the best place you could ever, ever be. Uh, so I was so fortunate to have the Library of Performing Arts at Lincoln Center right at my disposal. And I also was raised by an extraordinary woman, my Aunt Lillian, who was a little bit of an anti mame crossed with Tom Sawyer's Aunt Polly. So uh, she would give me uh, these big coffee table books of um, you know, the great stars of the American theater. You know, these overviews, you know, and I'd just pour over these books and I'd see like some lady's face that I thought was intriguing and I'd end up going over to the library and, you know, and, and look further. So really, oddly enough, my big interests were, were theater history even more than the movies. So when I discovered, you know, at an early age, let's say about 12, Sarah Bernhardt, who was the, the first real international superstar. You know, she cre kind of created the, the template. And, uh, and that, she was such an inspiration, her life was such an inspiration to me, particularly as a, as a you know, offbeat, you know, gay kid. The fact that here is this, this woman I was reading about who uh, w had thought of herself as, as a young person as this complete sort of misfit, you know, almost sort of strange, skinny, ho homely girl. And then through, you know, just sheer determination, she actually changed the entire um, concept of, of what feminine beauty was, which had, when she became an adult young actress, there was all these, you know, the full figured but some voluptuous kind of 19th century person. And here she was this sort of tubercular Jewish, you know, ex exotic creature. So that, that the idea of, of that you could transform yourself, that you could, you know, if you have this vision of who you want to be, you can, you can turn yourself into that. And you can actually force other people to see you as you want to be seen. And that was I thought, a fascinating thing. And that's kind of a lesson that you can you know, use even if you're not in the showbiz. Uh, the idea of, of sort of being your own actor manager appealed to me, and particularly as a, as a young uh, gay uh, a actor, writer, you know, or particularly as an actor, that was my first notion, you know, like you, you know, just to be, to be an actor, and I thought, it's not gonna happen. You know, I'm um, too, too gay and too eccentric, and you know, offbeat, but through the idea of Sarah Bernhardt's uh, career, I thought I, I can create my own theater. I can, you know, um, Charles Ludlam, who was also a great um, idol of mine, wonderful uh, playwright, director, actor, had his own company. I read a quote where he once said that if you, if the doors are locked to you, build your own door and then walk through it. And so it's very similar to Sarah Bernhardt. So, those, so I'd say that Bernhardt was my big inspiration. And then as I got older, Charles Ludlam was the example that I followed. So I, you know, I was raised by my aunt in New York City. And for a, a very sophisticated lady, she was remarkably innocent about anything gay related. She, and it's a pity too, because she was the kind of lady that, you know, her life would have been far less lonely if she had actually cultivated a group of, of gay friends who would have adored her, but she just, it just was not in her consciousness. Uh, so the funny thing was that she kept pushing me into these gay situations completely innocently. So like, for instance, her, she was obsessed with that I was supposed to learn how to swim. It was a big issue, just that she just, felt that it was very important for me because I was so unphysical and, you know, and unathletic that, that maybe swimming would be healthy for me. So she uh, got me a, a, a membership to the McBurney Y on 63rd Street, not knowing, not knowing that this was the most notorious gay s cruising place in the world, basically. 
And I didn't know either. You know, I was, I guess, 15, maybe, something like that, 16. You know, so I went up there dreading that I was going to go swimming. And suddenly, you, you know, it was just this uh, sexual, you know, panorama, you know. And, and, uh, and I had been, you know, I'd, I was this kind of Oliver Twist type person, you know. I, my mother died when I was seven, and I, you know, I, I just was, went through a difficult childhood and sort of saw myself as this kind of, you know, wayfish, you know, orphan type. And then when I got to McBurdy Y, suddenly I, I, was a, I was a cute teenager. And, you know, and all these men were, uh, you know, were, were following me around into the, into the shower room and all that. So in, in a certain sense, you know, like I never came out, you know, in a way. I, it was just always there, you know, because, you know, I was lucky. I grew up in a very sophisticated environment. Um, but the difference was that one day I became sexualized. That was the thing. And, and that was so wonderful because then it was kind of like the world went from black and white into technicolor and I was no longer this, you know, as I said, orphan waif type, but, but I was a, a sexy teenage boy and I felt that power and changed my whole life. Now, I really, really do believe that everybody must have a frame of reference. I mean, to survive in, in, in society, you just you know, have to, there's certain things you gotta know.